Hi everyone, it's a ticket to Christ. Thank you for tuning back in and welcome. We're still in the women's series and we are looking at John 8. We're, we're looking at the woman caught in adultery. John 8 verse 1. Jesus went onto the Mount of Olives and early in the morning he came again into the temple and all the people came unto him and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto him, unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. And again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the, the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone and the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Um, so uh, let us unpack this a little bit, maybe get some zero in on the context of what was happening. So if I... In reading the chapter before, um, I noticed it's the Feast of Tabernacles that was taking place. And Jesus was in Galilee, um, or the, I think they call it the Galilee these days. Um, so that's the fall feast. It's one of the fall feasts. And um, it's the last of the three fall feasts. And then um, he is um, in the temple and he's standing teaching the people. Well, he's sitting teaching the people, right? And it's early in the morning. And so that is the context and the time when this, the Pharisees and the scribes brought this woman. She was caught in the act of adultery and they brought her before Jesus to trap Jesus. Verse five says, um, verses five and six explain that. And they are like, now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou, right? And why is it they were doing that? If you look back on chapter seven, really quickly in verse 19, Jesus, you know, among other things had said, did not Moses give you the law? And yet none of you keepeth the law. Why go ye about to kill me, right? So um, they had a way of, of, zeroing in on it, the wrong things and coming to try to justify themselves with foolish things and to try to trap Jesus. So they figured, okay, we got him now because uh, we're saying, look, this is what Moses' law commanded, but if you um, say not to stone her, then you're contradicting yourself, you know, and, and you're what you're saying so you don't you know they were just not had they had no interest then in the righteousness of God their reasoning for bringing this woman wasn't in any way because they cared about what God thought or they cared about righteousness and Jesus knew that so how do you think this woman felt standing there um I would imagine that she had I, I imagine that her head was hung in shame and I imagine she was shaking and terrified because she knew that these very people could and, and would be willing to make good on stoning her to death you know um and so this one this woman's life hung on Jesus's reaction it would, it would have taken a divine reaction. And so in a sense, she was very fortunate and privileged to be brought before Jesus because in essence being brought before God. And what happened? So she's standing there, I imagine head hang, hung, hung. 
these uh, men, uh, a group of them coming to accuse her, they are versed on the law and the traditions. And Jesus stoops down and with his fingers wrote on the ground as though they heard, he heard them not. And then they kept repeating it. Well, what, what are we to do? What are we to do? So, you know, you, Jesus is, is on the ground writing. Why do you think Jesus is writing on the ground? Why do you think he did that? A lot of people speculate, but the scriptures actually tell us. Uh, scriptures tell us in Jeremiah 17. I marked it. In verse 13, it says right here, O oh Lord, the hope of Israel, all that forsake thee shall be ashamed, and they that depart from me shall be written in the earth, because they have forsaken the Lord, the fountain of living waters. So what was happening there was a prophecy of what would happen to end times uh, Israel at, in that first end times, that they had forsaken the Lord in their heart and that their names would be written in the earth. And that's what was happening there. Some people speculate as to what Jesus actually wrote. Some people say he wrote their names. I think that he wrote, he that is without sin among you, let him cast the first stone because that's what he stood up and said, but I don't know. You know, and he gave the perfect response that only God could give. And I imagine the woman, I imagine her just froze when she heard that probably didn't even look up. And it says Jesus stooped down again and wrote on the ground. I heard one woman say, I don't remember who, she said that with Jesus stooping down to the ground, it would have diverted the attention from off the woman onto Jesus. And so that it was even an act of compassion and protection on Jesus's part in showing mercy to this woman. You know, Jesus said, in another scripture, I think it's in the book of Matthew, Matthew 9, go and find out what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. That God is a father who's merciful, you know, and we see the wisdom of God here and the mercy of God here. And they all left. It says they were convicted in verse 9 by their own conscience and went about one by one. The eldest first um, and then the last, you know, the, the eldest would have had the wisdom to know, okay, I do have sin. I don't have a standing here. And the woman was left with Jesus alone and, you know, with Jesus's other regular people that were there. Jesus wasn't just all by himself because then later you see him talking to others. So then Jesus turns to her and what does Jesus ask her? Jesus says, woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? So he turned and he looked at her. So he saw her. You know, some people would have just walked away from her. But Jesus gave her value by addressing her and asking her a question that would bring her to an understanding that even though she had been in sin, these other so-called uh, religious teachers of the law also had sin. And so they didn't have any grounds to condemn her. And that he who had grounds to condemn her, being the Messiah, the Son of God, Jesus said, she says, no man, Lord. And she calls him Lord. Respect in realizing probably whose presence that she was in. Um, this is me speculating. I would imagine that when, when she saw what happened, she realized that this, this man had to be the Messiah. And Jesus said, neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. So notice Jesus doesn't condemn her, but he still calls her to repentance, calls her to, uh, to, to return, to, you know, to turn, turn from her life of sin and turn to God, turn away from it and be transformed. And I believe that she was, and she did, you know, um, this passage, I think is a good one to study out and to look at. In the way that we look at people and in the way that we understand what God wants from us um, in our interactions with others. And also in the way that we deal with our own lives. A lot of times people can walk around, especially women, feeling very condemned. And Jesus didn't come to condemn you. He came to bring you life. He came to bring you to repentance. And the Holy Spirit doesn't condemn, it convicts you. 
you know. And uh, but as if you're not a Christian, um, this is who you're coming to once you come into a relationship with God, a father of compassion, a God of mercy, an incredibly wise God, a father who protects, you know. Um, if you're already a Christian, of course, um, you would have already turned away from this sort of life. And if you've backslidden, this is an opportunity to take, what is it, take, take, to return. I forgot the word in Hebrew. I think it's teshuva, te um, but it means to return, to go come back to the Lord. And this is the God that you come back to, a father who's merciful, a God of compassion. Jesus was the only one who had the standing who would have been able to con condemn her, and he didn't condemn her. He called her to repentance and to change. So, beloved, that's it from me with this one. I hope it uh, ministered to you in some way and that you got a lot from it and will get in your own personal study. I'm going to drop the scriptures below that you can refer to them. Hope you're doing well. Take care. Bye-bye.